This video is an introduction to the ERP SIM extended manufacturing game, and it mostly covers the production process. It is meant to complement the supplemental ERP SIM SAP Labs and textbook. It presumes you have some SAP experience coming into it, hopefully with ERP SIM itself, and that could be with a distribution game, one of the ERP SIM products, or the SAP Labs from the supplemental textbook. This overview here, the, the presumption of experience, means you're kind of familiar with how the simulation works, or at least how the, the different products that you're working with. This video is a top-level overview of basic company information, the, the market itself, and then also spending most of the time on the general production process. So the next time you're going to be running the, an SAP lab, the ERP Sim Labs, it will be the manufacturing game. And again, this is just an overview. I'm really going to spend a lot of time focusing on an overview to discussion of the pro production process. Don't feel like you need to understand everything that's happening within this. This is the kind of thing that as you get a little bit more experience, you'll end up learning a little bit more and then go coming back and looking at this again might help you with it. So don't feel like you need to understand it as you're watching this video. But the sooner you understand, the better off you'll be as far as coming up with a strategy. So be ready to watch this video again. This is, some big information is given here. There's a lot of details that come after this, but this is the basic information you need to know. So be ready, be prepared to watch this video again as you get a little bit more experience. Jumping into this, and before you get started, there are a couple of resources for you to note. There's from ERP Sim Labs, the Manufacturing Game Participants Guide. Your, your instructor should provide this for you. If they have not, it's available on the ERP Sim Labs website. So when you signed up for ERP Sim, you gave the username, password. If you were to log back onto that website, you would find the number of resources, and one of them is the Participants Guide. The Participants Guide is far more detailed than this video, uh, than the, the next resource I'm going to cover. It gives you detailed product and company information and it also gives you more detailed information about the vendors, the customer, and your market. The information in this video is certainly available in the Participants Guide. It's coming from the Participants Guide. So this is definitely something you'll want to have handy, have to, available to review before you get started. The other main resource you'll want, and this is really designed for gameplay itself, is the job aid. And again, your instructor should provide this for you. If not, it is available on the ERBSIM website and in another category. Uh, on that site where you found the participants guide. It's in a, a category called job aid. This is a quick overview of everything. So general processes, information about the SAP transactions, some general product and company information as well, just, just the tidbits you need to know, and some general vendor and customer information as well. This is uh, something you really need to have handy when you're playing the manufacturing game. Getting started here, you have a company that is creating muesli. It is big in Germany. It's a breakfast cereal. You have six different products that you're creating, and each product is available in two different sizes. So looking at these, the, the products are made up of these ingredients, so the finished product. So looking at ERP muesli nut, there's 20% wheat, 20% oat, 20% nut. These are minimum requirements. And then there's one box and one bag. There are two different sizes. So these minimum requirements would also follow 500 grams. So if you have a 500 gram product, the minimum requirements would be 20% of 500 grams. Or if you have a large, it's 20% of the 1,000 or 1 kilogram product. The box and the bag also need to be appropriately sized. So if you have a large product, it's one large box, one large bag. The small product, it's one small box, one small bag. Some items to note within this is as you get more experience, you'll want to adjust the recipes. You do need to meet these minimum requirements for the ingredients, but how you mix them is up to you. And you will want to, to end up meeting the market. So they may want a little bit more of something or a little less of something else. So this is part of your strategy is adjusting your product. Not something to be worried about the first time you're, you're doing this, but as you're trying to be more competitive, that is something important to note. In addition, you can't make a new product. There are only these six products, and these are the minimum requirements for each one. And what that means is you can't do something like a blueberry strawberry muesli. If you want to have blueberries and strawberries together, that's under mixed. And mixed requires some of all of these, the raisin, the nut, the blueberry, and strawberry. 
So you couldn't just have strawberry and blueberry, you'd have to have some nut and some raisin within it. You might make it heavier on the blueberry, heavier on the strawberry, light on the nut, light on the raisin. That's something you could do, but it would have those in there. So it would not be a new product. There are no new products within this. You're selling your muesli to various grocery stores across the German market. There's the north, there's the west, and the south. There are three different distribution channels that are across all of Germany, and you can see one of these, the hypermarkets. There's three in the west, there's seven in the south, and two in the north. And you can see the distribution for each one of these as well. Each of the hypermarkets has a different way of approaching things. So the hypermarkets themselves, this is something that's European. It's not something that is as common in North America. The closest in North America is something like Sam's Club, where they buy a lot of products, larger products it tends to be, and they sell them inexpensively in bulk. So that's the closest, but it's not quite a hypermarket. A hypermarket is a very European thing, <laughs> again. They only buy the one, uh, buy the, the one kilogram boxes, the large boxes, because they do work in bulk. Their payment, with they, the time that they're paying you tends to be 20 days after delivery. So it's a slower payment than some of the other distribution channels. Because they are price sensitive, your price needs to be lower to be able to get in. They are not sensitive to advertising. So it's not the kind of thing where you can say, I'm going to have a high price and a lot of advertising to make up for it. They aren't as sensitive to your marketing. They're more sensitive to your price. Looking at these, and this is an important thing to note, each one of the hypermarkets will have a preference for three different products during the simulation, and that does not change. Every simulation it changes, but once it's set, it does not change. So thinking about that, if each one has a, a preference for three products, and there are only three in the West, that means that of those three, each one of those three will have a preference for three different products. For these seven, it's three different products per seven. <laughs> for these two, it's three different products per those two. So that's something to keep in mind, finding out which of those products it is, which actual hypermarket is buying, and which products those are can make a difference to your strategy. The next distribution channel is a grocery chain. This is a fairly straightforward grocery store. Uh, Kroger's is the biggest in uh, the United States. Uh, in the UK, it's Tesco. You know, there's a number of different major grocery chains that are out there. They have a bit more shelf space. They, have, they try to match many people's preferences. So they do purchase the, the large and the small boxes, the one kilogram and the half kilogram. The payment, it, it depends on which one you're, is buying from you. So it could be 10 days, it could be 20 days. They're, it's not like you can charge anything. So you have to have a decent price, but they also respond to advertising. So it's a combination of the two. Within these, they have a preference for four different products during the simulation. Again, this is something that changes each time, but once you figure out which one of the grocery chains is purchasing which four products, that's something you can work into your strategy. So thinking that through, just like with the hypermarkets, this is the distribution of these. So there's 23 of the grocery stores in the south, and if you can figure out which ones are buying which product, that can actually help you out within your strategy. The last distribution channel is 14. They are smaller, kind of mom and pop <laughs> stores. They don't have a whole lot of shelf space, so they only buy the small boxes, the half kilogram boxes. They tend to pay, well, it's pretty open. <laughs> it might be one day, it might be 20 days. So most often you're going to get paid more quickly than distribution channels 10 and 12. They are not as sensitive to price, and they are sensitive to advertising. So it's kind of the opposite of the hypermarket. With, so within these, you can have a higher price as long as you have the right marketing to go along with it. So there are many of these independent grocers, but each one only has a preference for two products. So again, this is part of your strategy is figuring out which one of the independent grocers is buying which products, and then that factors into your strategy. In running the game, you're going to be simulating the passage of time. So on round one, day one, you have a functioning company. <laughs> it has ERP, They're using SAP as the interface. You have best practices in place for sales and production. SAP is designed out of the box to be best practices for everything you'll be doing. 
However, you don't have a sales forecast, you don't have any raw materials, and you have no finished products. And it's, I have listed here round one, day one. You can actually do some of these things before the simulation actually starts, but round one, day one, you do not have any finished products. <laughs> you will not sell anything on round one, day one. In order to have something to sell, you have to produce. So this is going to be an overview of the production process. And if you are doing SAP Lab 4, this is the process that you're going to be doing. So I'll have another video that goes over the actual production process using SAP, referring to the job aid, so going back and forth. This is just kind of a conceptual overview of the production process. So the first thing you have to do to produce within the manufacturing game is create a forecast. This is your sales forecast. This is your replenishment level. It's the independent requirements for the finished goods. So it has a lot of different names. Many people just refer to it as the sales forecast. Uh, this is, falls under the category of sales and operations planning. Everything within a company comes from this forecast. So this is where everything comes from. This is the, the main point. So MD61 is the forecast, create forecast. Getting started, again, you have to decide the forecast. What is that going to be? You have to have starting quantities for each of the products you are planning to produce. You can't procure anything, you can't produce anything without that forecast in place. So MRP, Material Requirements Planning, plans for purchase requisitions and plan production orders. And you can't do either of those without a forecast. Keep in mind as I'm talking about this, the Participant's Guide has information about this and the Supplemental Textbook has information about this. So there's detailed information about how to set a forecast within the Supplemental Textbook and how that fits into MRP and the production process. So if you'd like more details about this, again, make sure you go back and read those. The, but all of this, the, the, everything within production comes from the forecast. So MD61 is the transaction code for SAP that sets the forecast. In thinking this through, the forecast is from MRP run to MRP run. So if you run MRP every five days, you're saying, I want to have it at this level every time I run it. So if it's every five days, whatever you sold from the time you ran MRP from the last time to this time, that's what it's going to order is the difference. So this is the from the job aid, MD61, quick instructions. So it tells you to go into the product group dollar sign dollar sign dash F and click enter and then you're going to put in the, the the forecast how much do you want per unit now an important thing to note is the second date column so you're always going to have it in column two you never have it in column one never in column three or four or five or six this is important because MRP is looking at this column and this is the next month relative to today's date so no matter what today's date is whatever next month is, it could be the last day of the month, it could be the first day of the month, the, the second column is next month. So if it's November, it's, it's the this December, if it's February, it's March, it's always column two. Once you have the forecast in place, again, this, is, this doesn't do anything, you're just setting it. You're telling it this is a, a variable that you are setting. Once you have set this, then you can start planning your procurement and planning your production. So the planning comes from MRP, Material Requirements Planning. This is the transaction within SAP. This is from the job aid itself. This is a very easy transaction to run. It's MD01, enter, 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 and it just does it for you. <laughs> All the default parameters are already set. So each time you run MRP, it creates a new plan. It replaces, it deletes the previous purchase requisitions. It deletes the planned production orders you may have created, and it makes a new one based on what's happening currently. The important thing to note is that it is a plan. MRP, the P is planning. So running MRP doesn't do anything. You can run MRP over and over and over and over and over, and all you're going to get is a new plan. So keep that in mind. <laughs> you've now set the forecast, which all that is is the parameter that MRP is using. If you've run MRP, you've done nothing but created a plan. It plans two different things. So there's the purchase requisitions, the procurement side of things, and the planned production order. So those are the two pieces. 
purchase requisitions are for purchasing raw materials. So again, running MRP doesn't order anything. Run MRP over and over and over, you get nothing. The purchase requisition is a planned purchase order. The purchase order is what you actually submit to your vendor to be so that they fulfill your raw material requirements. This is a plan for that purchase order. There's also the plan production orders themselves. So based on your forecast, what will be manufactured, you'll be planning the ordering purchase requisitions and you're planning the production for the plan production orders. And again, MRP is just a plan. So here we, we work in, <laughs> working through the whole production process here. So we are not gonna do some of these other things here within the simulation. This is some things that have accounting, it's receiving the raw materials, all that kind of stuff. This is all, within the simulation, it's automatically taken care of for you. So you run MRP using the forecast, and then to actually get the purchase requisitions to convert to purchase orders, there's another transaction, ME59N. This is a fairly straightforward transaction. You type ME59N in and you click execute. Poof, it happens. <laughs> That's how easy it is. You end up getting a, a, a screen like this that shows these purchase requisitions and these purchase requisitions have been converted from planned purchase orders to the actual production order, or purchase order, sorry, the purchase order. So plan purchase orders, the purchase requisition, and actual purchase orders. These go to your vendor to buy the raw materials you need for your finished goods. So there's two different vendors within the manufacturing game. One is for the food raw materials and the other is for the boxes and bags. So ME59N takes your plan from MRP and turns it into something you actually need. Uh, so you've actually submitted the order. The important thing to realize is that, just like in the real world, when you place an order with your vendor, you have to wait for delivery. So there's always lead time. It d depends on the day. It's a, a random uh, number <laughs> between one and five days. You will see it within a tracking report called ZME2N, Purchase Order Tracking. So after you've converted your purchase requisitions, your planned purchase orders into actual purchase orders, you need to wait. And as you're waiting, you open up the report ZME2N and watch for the raw material, material delivery. So this is what the purchase order tracking system looks like. And it, it's just a report, ZME2N. It has a refresh button, so you can refresh it. It also tells you what the day is within the simulation. So this one, within this, the simulation has not started yet. And when it's not started, it shows you unconfirmed and not scheduled. But it's showing you what you purchased. So for this one, there were, it looks like 600,000 <laughs> products were purchased uh, or, or planned to be produced. So that's 600,000 large boxes, 600,000 large bags and then the food raw materials to go on with along with it. So this is Food Broker Inc. and this is Continental Printing. Once the uh, simulation is started, so this is round one, day one, you can see all of this has stayed the same, but we show that we're expecting to receive the, the goods and they'll come in on day five. Now, one thing to note is that within the simulation, with the, in the manufacturing game, during the first several days of the simulation, it's actually one day. So if you submit these and it goes through on round one, day one, it should be round one, day two, that you receive the goods. From then on, it ends up being random between one and five days. Once you receive the raw materials, it shows delivered. So on day five, you can see that it shows up that it's been delivered. And once it's been delivered, then you can actually get started on the production process. So MRP, back when you ran that five simulated days ago, it created the purchase requisitions, which you converted into purchase orders. And it also created the production plan, the planned production orders. Once you have the raw materials in stock, those can then be allocated to production. And there is a, an SAP transaction that converts all the planned orders into actual planned or production orders. So it's CO41, you type it in and then click execute. The default information here works. You'll have a list of all the different products you chose based on your
forecast and when you ran MRP to convert and click the line item here and then click convert and then it shows you that the order has been converted you can also click this button here and it selects everything and convert so <laughs> this is where we are within the production process we've run MRP which is based on our sales forecast we converted our oh that's on another side this is on the production side sorry <laughs> jumping ahead of myself <laughs> this so this is on the production side not the procurement side we ran MRP it it created the the procurement side this is the production side so we have executed MRP and then we've converted the production the plan production orders into actual production orders and when the simulation is running you don't have to do anything because it's taking care of this for you so it's actually going to be confirming the production orders for you once you have converted everything, you can go to the production schedule. This is again from the job aid, Z-C-O-O-I-S, and that is lo uh, the letters O, <laughs> it's not zeros, Z-C-O-O-I-S. And from this, you can actually see what round, what day it is. This means that it has not been scheduled yet. And you can see that there's 50,000 of each one of these for production. So again, not scheduled once it has all been produced you can actually refresh and update to see the exact day that it was produced when it's when it actually finished within this one it, it we're still in day six so it hasn't completed yet but you can see target is 50,000 and 24,000 have been confirmed so as of round one day six there should be 24,000 one kilogram nut muesli available for sale so the production process is really a strategic process. It seems pretty uh, functional, but it's really a strategy. So it's the key to a successful strategy, a winning strategy. Your profitability really is in line with your productivity. If you are not producing, you can't be selling. So you want to make sure that you have all of this down. Checking your inventory, you can go to uh, it's one of the transaction codes ZMB52 it's a report and it shows you how much you have in stock for each one of these and this is the overall production process again the only items you'll be doing creating the forecast running MRP converting your planned purchase orders into actual purchase orders and then converting your production plan production orders into production once the raw materials have been received and everything else is automated within the simulation when you get started within this, so the first round, it's 20 simulated days. Production really should be your main focus. So doing the, the forecasting, procuring, producing, you really need to get this process down. So your ultimate goal within the simulation in a future game, <laughs> once you've gotten the process down, is to not have any stock outs of the products you want to actually have in stock. The sales and marketing side of this is really a secondary focus. The production process is the thing to get down. But on the sales and marketing side, you're looking for trends, and then you're feeding that into the production planning. And again, the production process needs to be down for this to even make sense. Even if you found a trend, if the production process isn't working, you're not gonna be able to match it. So you're maintaining the price of your products within this. You can invest in marketing. Throughout this entire simulation, as we get more and more into strategy, use any external tools you'd like. Excel is a natural fit for it. The reports copy and paste right into it. But you can use mini tab, you can use whatever you'd like. But really, focus on production at this point. There is there's a lot of information, but the pr production process needs to be down. So don't worry about how much you're selling. Don't worry about your ranking. Just get that production process down. Look at other transactions if you have time for it. But until you have production down, don't worry about the strategy side. So just an overview of those things, those couple of things you can do. So this is from the job aid, VK32. So it gives you some general instructions to open up the prices folder, double click on price list. There's a selection screen where you can choose the distribution channels, click execute, and then you'll see your prices for the products. It is sorted by distribution channel. So distribution channel 10 only buys the large boxes. So you'll see the material codes for those, the one kilogram boxes. So it'll, it'll take a little bit. It, it makes sense to actually have specific distribution channels set up so you're seeing 
of the products you actually want to see within it rather than all of them in one screen. You can also work on marketing, Z-A-D-S. You can see all 12 possible products as well, so the labels will be there. You type in the information, you click Save. So again, your goal is rounds one and two, produce and sell something. Just keep your production process going. So watch the viewer for pricing and news so you can see what's going on with those, but really work on production. Once you get more comfortable with that, then you can start looking at other things, exploring the other transactions, but really don't get caught up in something that's not production. <laughs> so the details, again, there, there are a lot of different strategies. I have uh, a lot of experience with this with students who start asking me questions about how they can invest in the company to speed up the production process or whatever. If you don't have the production process down, mm, you shouldn't really be thinking about those things. So focus on consistent production. The reason for this is it spreads the fixed cost across more units, the higher your productivity is. If you have production issues, then the fixed costs pile up and then your strategy for investing in the company is really just another expense and it, it's not helping you at all. So make sure you have consistent production, otherwise your winning strategy will always lose. So inconsistent production is always the basis for a company that's not performing well. So walking through the steps again, and, and remember this is in the participants guide, this is on the job aid, and it's covered in the supplemental text as well. So the first part, MD61, is the forecast. This is the replenishment level for the different products that you want to sell. MD01 takes that forecast and creates two different things, the procurement side, the plan procurement, and the plan production. ME59N converts the plan purchase orders for procurement, the purchase requisitions, into purchase orders. You have to wait for the vendor lead time. It's at least a day you're waiting. Watch ZME2N to see when you're goods come in, and then you're converting the other side of MRP, the production process. CO41, you're going to be converting the planned production orders into production orders. From there, you watch ZCOOIS, the production schedule, to see when your products come through. And then either one of the sales reports, ZVA05, is an overview. You can look that to make sure that you have some sales. This is Lab 4, if you're doing that. But keep practicing. There's no need to change the forecast every single time, but repeat the process from ND01 through CO41. Repeat it until you really know it and you feel comfortable with it, and change the forecast only if it's necessary. When you're ready for it, there is a follow-up video, and it's demonstrating the, the, the production process with SAP using the job aid, and that would be a good idea to watch that video after watching this video, and it will also prepare you for SAP Lab 4 if you're completing that.